One of the most successful tactical shooter franchises of all time has reinvented itself in a way that nobody ever saw coming. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands blew up so much that even our Frederator fans couldn't stop requesting a 107 for it, and we're happy to deliver it. Hi, I'm Justin with the Leaderboard, and today, per your request, we're going to be counting down this new rad installment set in a fictional Bolivia. So grab your squad and sync up your shots, because this is 107 facts about Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. Let's get started. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands is an open-world tactical shooter that was created by Ubisoft Paris, the team behind games like Red Steel and Just Dance. It was released to the public on March 7, 2017 for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Wildlands is the 10th main installment of the Tom Clancy Ghost Recon series, which wasn't based on any novels written by Tom Clancy himself, though Ubisoft has licensed the use of his name. The games, however, have inspired a novel based on the franchise written by Richard Dansky called Ghost Recon Wildlands Dark Waters. It serves as a prequel to the game, following the story of how the squad came together on a mission to the Amazonian jungle, where Nomad, Weaver, Midas, and Holt have been sent to rescue American citizens being held hostage by Venezuelan soldiers gone rogue. Richard Dansky is the main writer for the game studio Tom Clancy co-founded, Red Storm Entertainment, a Ubisoft-owned studio responsible for creating many of Clancy's games. Ghost Recon Wildlands The Game takes place in Bolivia in the year 2019. A Mexican drug cartel known as the Santa Blanca have gained so much power that they deeply influenced the local government, converting it into a narco state. Their influence moves beyond the borders of Bolivia, prompting the US government to send in a team of elite special agents, called Ghosts, to expose the government's connection to the Santa Blanca and destroy them. Though Ghosts are a fictional unit within the Clancyverse, they are very similar in function to the US military's real-life Delta Force and the US Air Force 24 Special Tactics Squadron, as they all serve under the real-life Joint Special Operation Command. Development of the game began in 2012, meaning the team worked on the game for a whopping five years. Many of the members of the Wildlands team came from the development team of the previous main Ghost Recon installment, Future Soldier. Wildlands began development almost immediately after the release of Future Soldier. After the completion of Future Soldier, key members of the team made a point to meet with fans from the Ghost Recon community and ask them for feedback regarding the previous game and what they would like to see in a future installment. Much of this feedback went into the creation of Wildlands. Wildlands scraps the futuristic setting established in 2012's Future Soldier in favor of a modern-day setting, much like the original game released back in 2001. Though there are elements of stealth within the game, the developers opted to make the game more akin to something of a straight-up action title in comparison to previous titles in the series. This was done to better serve the open-world element of the game. According to Dominic Butler, when the team sets out to create a new Tom Clancy title, there are two steps. First, they take a look at real conflict or problems happening in the world and thoroughly research it. Next, they apply a what-if question to the real issue that will make it into something worthy of a video game. In case of Wildlands, the developers asked themselves what if the drug cartels moved out of the shadows and expanded to such a point they took over a whole country and used that power to run every aspect of a drug operation. The team decided to base the game in Bolivia, not only because it's the world's third largest grow of cocoa leaf, but because the diverse locations found within the country, from salt flats to swamps to open deserts to lush jungles, it was clear that Bolivia lent itself well to an open world game. To authentically capture the look and feel of Bolivia in their game, the development team took a business trip to Bolivia that spanned a few weeks. They came back with about 15,000 reference photos and over 15 hours of video to use as reference throughout development. Not only did the developers capture the landscapes, they spent plenty of time interviewing locales about life in Bolivia. They even visited a prison and interviewed the inmates about life on the inside. The team's goal in creating the environment was to make the look and feel of their Bolivia as close to the real thing as they possibly could by incorporating familiar natural features, historic landmarks, and accurate depictions of Bolivian society. Not only is the game the first open world game in the Ghost Recon series, it's also the largest open environment to appear in a Ubisoft title. The open world of Wildlands boasts nine different types of terrain, from mountains to forests to deserts. To top it all off, the game features a day and night cycle and changing weather to spice up your shootouts. Tackling missions during the daytime makes both enemies and yourself easier to spot, resulting in more potential firefights. Night Ops allows you to embrace your more stealthy side, giving you more of a tactical advantage, though it's harder to see others. Not only was it important for the team to create a huge playable world, but one that was believable and alive. On top of the day and night cycles we mentioned, they achieved this by incorporating everyday civilians going about their lives, typical traffic patterns found in big cities, not to mention the conflicts between factions and business dealings. The weapons chosen for the game weren't just random selections that seemed cool to the developers. The team spent a lot of time researching what kind of weapons both real Mexican drug cartels and militia commonly
commonly used and worked off that data. Much of Wildland's story was written by Hollywood screenwriter Shane Salerno and acclaimed author Don Winslow, who is known for his drug war book series that began with The Power of the Dog and continued with, appropriately enough, The Cartel. Winslow and Salerno have written together before, both of them collaborating on the script of the Oliver Stone film Savages, which was based on one of Winslow's novels. Winslow never set out to write about cartel life. He was inspired by one particular trip he and his family would take to a small Mexican town near the border during which a local drug cartel massacred 19 locals. Winslow was deeply affected by this event, asking himself how and why such a thing could even happen. Winslow has an entire personal library filled with research on the nature and operations of drug cartels consisting of literally hundreds of books, court documents, and FBI files. Additionally, he has also spent plenty of his time speaking to law enforcement and convicts alike when preparing to write a story like Wildlands. One goal the developers had when crafting the game's story was exploring drug cartels and developing them further as more than just bland bad guys. They wanted to show gamers the more human side of these people and give them an idea of why they did what they did. Wildlands utilizes the Anvil engine, which was heavily modified over time. Anvil is a game engine developed by Ubisoft Montreal, the guys behind the Assassin's Creed games. In addition to the Assassin's Creed series, games like Rainbow Six Siege and For Honor were also created using an iteration of the Anvil engine. Ubisoft Paris had to make their own modifications to the Anvil engine, as it was previously not designed to create genuine open world experiences like the one the team strove to create for Wildlands. They had to find a fine line between making the world massive and beautiful while making sure it ran smoothly at all times. The development team wanted to do away with any potential leashes that could restrict cooperative play. They tweaked the engine so that co-op partners could play great distances from each other, allowing for more elaborate strategies when tackling any mission. When attempting to overcome the limitation of keeping players together, the developers looked to other games that had accomplished the same for their open world experiences for inspiration, only they couldn't really find any successful examples, meaning Wildlands' limitless experience could be the first of its kind. The development team managed to do away with loading screens within the game's open world. The only time the game ever needs to load is when the player starts up the map or utilizes fast travel. In a traditional open world experience, the main narrative can be hard to keep track of due to numerous unrelated side quests. In Wildlands, the developers overcame this problem by having multiple miniature story arcs that build toward and support the story's ending, namely by dividing the map in provinces that needed to be liberated by the Santa Blanca. Wildlands' limitless nature also applies to your character, allowing you to alter their look gender, gear, and weapons as you see fit. While the game's upgrade system caters to the typical fare of giving you better damage resistance and movement speed, the main emphasis of the system is to give the player access to the kind of playstyle they want to have by providing the player with a vast array of unlockable weapons and gadgets. Every vehicle you see in the game is drivable. Put simply, if the NPCs can drive it, so can you. The developers were sure to give this vast array of vehicles different functions and purposes that can help the player out in completing any kind of mission, including the seemingly useless civilian vehicles. If you're able to jack a Santa Blanca vehicle, you can use it to enter the cartel's bases undetected, meaning that putting bullets in everyone's brain is in fact something that can be avoided during a mission. Despite the game's modern setting, not all the equipment featured can be found in the real world. The developers got creative by adding in some fictional devices, like Wildlands' interpretation of drones, which can be upgraded by the player. Your drones can do so much more than just scout the area. It can be outfitted with different tools and weapons, like noise generators to distract your enemy, EMP pulses to take out the equipment, or explosives to, you know, kill him. The game's drones are outfitted with more than just a direct feed of the landscape. You're able to utilize a built-in night vision to overcome dark environments and thermal vision mode. Day and night cycles also influence AI behavior as well. While soldiers outside of enemy facilities may patrol the darkness, soldiers within these territories could be fast asleep, making infiltration easier if you keep quiet. Not every grenade has to be lethal. To support a stealthier playstyle, the game features a diversion grenade, a device that can be tossed into the battlefield to create a harmless distraction that will lure enemies away from your location. When when taking a stealth approach, be aware of when and where you take your enemies out. You can grab your enemies before taking them out, so you can drag their bodies into a more discreet location so the enemy patrols cannot find them. The enemy AI in Wildlands are no joke. If the lights go out, they will actively try and find you, and if they hear a gunshot or see a comrade's dead body, they'll relentlessly seek out the source. Cowardly AI can prove to be just as much of a challenge to the player as an AI willing to pump you with lead. The AI is aware of every possible option it can take to preserve itself. One of the more exciting options is its ability to board a nearby vehicle on the spot and turn a foot chase into a full-on unscripted car chase. The system with which enemies use to detect your presence isn't as simple as see them or don't see them. It's based on the real-time lighting of your character, meaning that you'll be able to be invisible in complete darkness, kind of hard to make out a shadow, and completely visible in broad daylight. While traversing enemy bases, you may indeed run into small prison cells housing captured rebels. Not only is rescuing them the right thing to do, but they
they can also be of great help in accomplishing your task, especially if you're playing it stealthy. Unlike most shooters out on the market, all NPCs found in Wildlands have their own unscripted agendas. This was done to create a sense of realism and give the player freedom to explore. The ghosts are able to interact and build relationships with local rebels, military personnel, and innocent civilians. Your life can either be made easier or harder depending on how you interact with them. The designers strove to create a seamless experience between co-op and solo play. When you're playing solo, you're progressing with your own story, but if you join up with your friends in a co-op game, the progress of both you and your friends will become merged so that you're always moving forward and never repeating and building up your character. Ubisoft wanted to give players the same core squad-based experience whether they were playing with friends or flying solo, giving the solo players a squad of three AI with which they can issue commands to. As opposed to other games where the friendly AI supporting the player is unpredictable and stupid, the AI companions given to solo players in Wildlands base their actions off of the players, so if you're playing it stealthy, they'll keep things quiet. The friendly AI is smart enough to pick out and spot nearby targets for you, but don't get carried away. They do so in a supplementary manner and aren't quite as proficient as a human player. Ghost Recon's signature Saint Shot move returns in Wildlands and can be done efficiently with one of your friends or the AI teammates if you're flying solo. Given the open nature of Wildlands, there is far more variety in how you can pull off Saint Shots, so get creative. When playing it solo with three AI squad mates, you will be granted a command wheel. With it, you can tell your squad to move position, regroup, open fire, or hold fire. Don't let the friendly AI's competence go to your head as they can be shot down easily by the enemies if you're not careful. Luckily, you don't have to be the one to go down and revive them as other AI are capable of picking up down teammates as well. The game features over 60 different weapons with hundreds of different attachments, from scopes to barrels to magazines, allowing you to create literally thousands of different customizable weapon combinations within the game's gunsmith mode. One of the bigger challenges the developers faced when designing the weapons was finding a balance between making the weapons feel fun and accessible, but also making them not feel like arcade choices found in most shooters. The game's realism is amplified by using a ballistic shooting model as opposed to the hitscan shooting found in most shooters. Whereas hitscan will register an automatic hit so as long as your crosshairs are on the target, a ballistics model requires that the player both aim and account for the amount of time it will take for a bullet to travel like a real weapon. As opposed to other games in which you must navigate through a pause menu, Wildlands allows you to swap out gun attachments on the fly without disrupting the flow of gameplay. The different terrains were not only designed to up the difficulty and challenge the players in different ways to revive their interest, but also as a way to bring new and unique tactics to the table. A swamp may provide more cover, while the salt flats provide a better line of sight. Wildlands' music was composed by Elaine Joannis, a Chilean-American musician known for his work collaborating with the likes of Queens of the Stone Age, Mark Lanigan, and PJ Harvey. But Wildlands was his very first time composing for a video game. Head on over to the Beauty Queen's mansion. There you'll find a distinct tower with a wooden ledge protruding from the top with an eagle perched atop it. Near the base of the tower, you will find a cart filled with leaves. This setup is incredibly similar to the towers in Assassin's Creed, that allow the player to perform the game's signature leap of faith. While exploring the Kaiman's province, you may run into a sword sitting within a bonfire atop a hill near a rebel outpost. This is a reference to the common setup found within the Dark Souls games. If you're traversing the barren salt flats of the Koenai region, it's possible to find a lone armchair sitting amongst the vast nothingness. This is a reference to the 1999 film, The Matrix, more specifically, the scene in which Morpheus and Neo converse within the barren white program called The Construct, in which two armchairs are made to appear. If you head over to the Child Hut and survey the area with a drone, you'll be able to see a child, just standing there. If you head on over yourself and attempt to approach a child, he will sprint into the bushes and magically disappear. But if you look at the Legends file found within the area, you'll see that this wasn't a glitch, but the ghost of a child that disappeared long ago. While bulldozers are pretty commonplace in Wildlands, you can find two armored bulldozers within the Pakara region, but these are the only ones of their kind within the entire game. While admiring the Super Dam in Pukara, you may run into a blue button placed in the middle of nowhere with a sign next to it reading, Don't Press Me, which is video game code for Do Press Me. When you press it, you'll be treated to a fireworks show. Near the border of La Cruz, you will find yet another button atop a hill within a burned down forest. When you deliberately disobey this sign, the button will trigger a line of ballistic missiles that will rise up into the air only to home in on your location, luckily not blowing you into bloody ribbons. The Koenai Wasteland hides yet another button, which if pressed, will trigger an enormous explosion off in the distance. Iron Man style. One more button can be found in the Malka region atop a hill across the Santa Muerte. Hitting this button will set the sculpture ablaze, causing it to shoot flames out of its palms. On the bottom left corner of the map, you'll find a region called Nuevo Mundo, the community of which uses parts and resources of airplanes that have crashed in the region as means to survive. This is similar to the 1993 film Alive, in which the characters must use the remains of their crashed plane to survive harsh conditions. In the Itakura region, you can find an abandoned town that has become exclusively populated by dogs, so what
What happened to the human inhabitants? Maybe that one episode of Rick and Morty was onto something. There is an unlockable costume within the game called The Division, which is a reference to another recent Ubisoft hit set within the Clancyverse, Tom Clancy's The Division. Some of the toughest enemies in the game are the corrupt government's military police force called the Unidad, which sports heavy armor and vehicles the Santa Blanca do not have access to. While the Unidad have an understanding with the Santa Blanca, it isn't an agreement written in blood, meaning that there are times where the factions can turn on each other in battle. Your squad isn't the only support you can call in. If you invest time into helping out the local rebel faction, you will be granted the ability to call in rebel enforcements on the fly, not unlike the gang support from Watch Dogs 2. There's more to the lieutenants if you restrain yourself from just killing them. After clearing out a base, you are granted the ability to interrogate these lieutenants about vital objectives scattered throughout the province. Adding to the freedom permitted to the player in the game, weapons will be outfitted with rounds that can penetrate both wood and stone surfaces to catch the enemy by surprise. The game features a whopping 21 different provinces for the player to liberate. While you aren't being strung along to complete them in any particular order, you may want to choose the order in which you tackle them carefully, as each province is given its own level of difficulty. The highest difficulty in this game is no joke. Unlike the legendary, insane, and veteran modes that came before in other game franchises, Ghost Recon Wildlands Extreme Difficulty setting takes only one bullet to send the player into a dirt nap. The game's difficulty is not only determined by a setting the player chooses, but also by how many players are currently in the game during co-op mode. The game will be most challenging when four players are present. There are other ways to make the game more challenging beyond difficulty settings. You can customize your heads-up display to remove critical components, feeding you intel, or you can even get more technical and switch off the game's aim assist. Some bosses in the game possess a unique customized weapon of their own design that you won't be able to find anywhere else in the game, so be sure to grab them when they hit the ground. Some Santa Blanca outposts are well aware of some advantages you have over them and will sometimes establish countermeasures to make your life a living hell. One such counter is the use of jammers, which will prohibit the player from using their handy dandy drone. In the Anka Kamina region, you will find a mysterious little rock shrine with a statue near it. This is one of eight miniature statues hidden throughout Bolivia that can be collected by the player, and each one will appear by the shrine after you collect it. Where are these statues and what do they do? Well, we're not going to spoil everything. Explore the Bolivian countryside and find out for yourself. Several clues point to the existence of a yeti within the game. For example, there are some corpses buried in the snow with scratch marks on their bodies. But no bullet holes, or a legend in San Mateo known as the Pistaco, which describes the existence of a creature that matches the likes of the mythical beast from the Andes. Though there are plenty of clues, no yeti has been found. Yet. Ghost Recon Wildlands was first unveiled to the public at E3 2015. Games Radar called the announcement one of the biggest surprises at the show, and when some of those surprises included the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter and a new Rareware game, that's pretty impressive. Game Informer awarded Ghost Recon Wildlands with Best Shooter and Best Cooperative Game at their Best of E3 in 2015, beating out the likes of Halo 5 Guardians in these categories. To get the game's hype train rolling, Ubisoft released a 30-minute live-action short film titled War Within the Cartel. The short was released on February 16th, 2017 on Ubisoft's Twitch channel. War Within the Cartel was executive produced by Robert Orchi, who previously wrote The Amazing Spider-Man and J.J. Abrams' Star Trek. It was directed by Avi Ubiain, who directed the episode of The Walking Dead titled Now. The end of the short film leaves off where the game begins. Wildlands received its very own public beta test from February 23rd to February 27th, 2017. At the close of the beta, Ubisoft announced that a whopping 6.8 million players had partaken in the test, making it Ubisoft's most successful beta ever. During the beta phase, over 60% of players played the game in co-op mode, while it took players an average of 7 hours to complete all of the main missions featured in the test. There were 1.2 billion kills and not nearly as much friendship, with only 43.7 million teammate saves. Those that partook in the beta test received the exclusive Unidad Conspiracy reward if they played again by March 31st. It granted players three exclusive story missions in the Medina Luna region. In it, the ghost must destabilize the rocky relationship between the Unidad and the Santa Blanca by uncovering a plot to betray the Santa Blanca concocted by the mysterious El Comandante. Ubisoft released a mini-documentary to coincide with the game's release called Wildlands. The goal of the documentary was to inform the players of the war on drugs in South America and what it meant to both the cartel and the law enforcement. Around the game's release, the Bolivian government expressed their displeasure with the country's portrayal in the game. Ubisoft responded with a public statement reiterating that Wildlands took place in a fictitious modern-day society created solely for entertainment purposes. The PC and PS4 versions of Ghost Recon Wildlands received mixed reviews on Metacritic, scoring a yellow 70 
and 71 respectively, but the Xbox One version beat them both out with a score of 76. Ubisoft released a companion app for Wildlands available both on iOS and Google Play. The app syncs up to your play session, providing you with a mini-map full of intel and in-game encyclopedia that features everything from character dossiers to mission files. What would a AAA release be without an expensive collector's edition? The Ghost Recon Wildlands Ghost Collector's Edition comes packed with an insanely detailed statue of Nomad himself. This edition also comes with collectible patches, a lithograph, and a metal steelbook case. Despite being better received on Xbox One, only 34% of sales occurred on Microsoft's console, while 66% of sales went to the PS4. Wildlands was the fastest selling game of March 2017 in the UK, even selling faster than the likes of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Horizon Zero Dawn. Despite the success in the UK, Wildlands was still the second fastest selling Tom Clancy game of all time in that region. The number one spot belongs to 2016's Tom Clancy's The Division. Wildlands proved to be popular in Japan, with the PS4 version selling nearly 90,000 copies in the first week of its release. This made it the number one selling game of that week, beating out Kingdom Hearts 1.5 plus 2.5 HD Remix. The game sold much better in Europe than the United States, with 45% of sales going to the former and 34% of copies being sold within the latter. The top three European nations to lead sales were the United Kingdom, followed by Germany, then France. The game is scheduled to have at least two big paid expansions. The first is Narco Road, which promises to give the player the full spectrum of narco life by invading three smuggling gangs in order to take out their leaders, and then finally take out the mysterious El Invisible. The second expansion, Fallen Ghost, features more of a survival aspect, following the squad after their chopper is shot down into enemy territory, where they are then hunted down by ruthless mercenaries known as Los Extran Heroes. Ubisoft has announced that a competitive multiplayer component will come in a future update and will pit two teams of four against each other, and indeed it will be free of charge. Once again, I'm Justin and thanks for watching 107 Facts about Ghost Recon Wildlands. Have you played it? Did we miss anything? Comment down below and let us know. If you want more from me, check out my channel, Stuff with Scoutfly, in the description down below. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of that awesome notification squad. And if you like getting more from your games, make sure to subscribe to the leaderboard where we help you game smarter.